Nous sommes en guerre. The coronavirus has the world firmly in its grip. I am officially declaring a national emergency. Personal mobility is seen as a potential danger and has been shut down. What does this mean for transport industries? How might the future of cars be affected? What will our mobility look like in the future? My name is Christoph Johann. I've worked as an automobile journalist for several decades. I'm searching for the mobility solutions of tomorrow, after Corona. The pandemic restrictions have had a radical impact on our cities. Streets such as Berlin's famous Kfürstendamm are eerily empty. Berlin's underground rail network, the U-Bahn, is also spookily quiet. Passenger numbers are just a quarter of normal levels. Small wonder, given the chances of infection here are far greater than in cars. I meet with Professor Barbara Lenz, head of transport research at Germany's Aerospace Center. For her, the shutdown is providing a rare opportunity for new research. I really shouldn't say this out loud, but it's been a really exciting case for us. It's something we could never simulate. Based on past findings, we expect cars and individual vehicles to become more important again. Individual vehicles includes bicycles, especially in the city. It's difficult to say at the moment whether sharing will be able to further expand. But what's really suffering at the moment is public transport. But will the auto industry be able to bounce back? And in what form? Around the world, car production lines have ground to a halt. Instead, many car makers are now producing medical supplies. Here at Seat, for example, respirators have been developed that are driven by windscreen wiper motors. Meanwhile, some potentially romantic aspects of cars are being appreciated once more. The good old drive-in cinema, for instance, such as here in Essen. And this is no ordinary car park. In Bushmills, Northern Ireland, a Christian community is gathering at a drive-in chapel. A mighty fortress is our God, wrote Martin Luther, but these believers also trust the fortress of their car for additional protection. Better safe than sorry. Did Elon Musk know something we didn't when he presented his Cybertruck in late 2019? Maybe post-corona, more people will want an indestructible car that Mad Max would be happy to take into battle. But even if we don't end up facing Fury Road-style apocalyptic worlds, it's not hard to believe that now more than ever, the SUVs will gain in popularity. Cars that are built to last, heavy duty and indestructible. Cars that give us maximum protection when we venture into the outside world. The last survivors out there. Obviously, if we're going to be seeking more refuge in cars, the interior will be even more important in future. When you get into your car, you want to have the perfect conditions, right? I want to talk to a specialist in the future of automotive design. Professor Paolo Tuminelli normally works in Cologne, Germany, but he got stuck in lockdown in Italy. On the one hand, the car is being rediscovered as a means of freedom. I can really only get around with my car. On the other hand, cars are becoming a safe place. I date the idea of automotive protection back to 9-11 in America. In the year after the Twin Towers fell, sales of SUVs increased by 30%. People feel protected in SUVs. So how will cars look after the pandemic? In these coronavirus times, we have been experiencing a lack of social contact. One longs to be with others, but it is forbidden. So perhaps glass capsules will come back. 
They were a big part of car design in the 1950s and were also popular in the 80s and 90s. In future, we may not be able to protect ourselves from other people's viruses, but glass is just as effective as sheet metal and more social. The trend towards innovative interiors was already growing before coronavirus showed up. Car designers are clearly more focused on what they can do with the inside of a vehicle and seem to add the exterior as an afterthought. The interior design, though, is where we think uh, you will see uh, the biggest amount of change in the next five years. Take the BMW Vision i next. Huge resources have been put into developing an interior that seems to wrap around the passengers like a second skin and offers them all their home comforts. In the near future, the time you spend in a car interior will become more and more valuable and, from a customer perspective, more and more relevant. The industry calls it cocooning. Like the cocoon of a caterpillar, the interior of the car should surround the passengers and protect, care for and also entertain them. I can imagine that it would be really great for a vehicle to have also this kind of feeling in it, that you feel in it and you feel safe, it's a little bit like a cocoon. You feel uh, protected also by the surrounding and you are just with yourself and whatever you need. So if you need technology, you can use it, but if you don't need it, then you can just, you can just leave it aside and it's hidden. The Mercedes Vision AVTR doesn't feel like you're inside a car at all. Inspired by the blockbuster Avatar, the AVTR features smooth transitions between inside and out. The outside world is actually only an extension of the inside. The Audi AI Me, a self-driving car, is another vehicle designed to fulfill every need of its passengers. While the car takes care of the driving itself, passengers have time to deal with other things. So the corona pandemic might just speed up changes that are already on their way. Some things will probably not change so fast, though. Vehicle safety tests, for example. At the testing center I checked out in Berlin, it looked as if normal service was going on. Tests are continuing as normal, as test manager Fabio Tumburus confirms. We stick to what the Federal Transport Ministry ruled, that we are an important part of infrastructure. But our daily work is somewhat restricted. We are also having to deal with kindergarten and schools being closed. But for now, we are managing to keep things running. Here too, the virus has left its mark. This sign reads, all driving tests have been cancelled indefinitely. But just because you're waiting for a driving license doesn't mean you can't drive. The endurance championship at the Nürburgring has gone virtual, with well-known drivers from real life taking on esports heroes in thrilling wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles. And if you've ever wondered what real racing drivers get up to while on home office, then wonder no more. Teams such as Jaguar are keeping fans informed via videos and podcasts. Hello and welcome to Recharge at Home, where we're going to be giving you regular updates from inside Jaguar Racing. As I head home, I go through all the potential impacts the corona crisis could have on cars and mobility. Firstly, the rise of SUVs is likely to strengthen even more. They offer protection and comfort during tough times. Secondly, inside is the new outside. Thirdly, glass is the new metal. And finally, sim racing is mega cool. So maybe things won't be so bad after all. As we saw after 9-11, the effect of such an event is felt for around half a year or so. Then things start to return to what we thought of as normal before. Which would be fine by me. I'd just be happy to see those great interior concepts coming out sooner rather than later.